and the boy's strict, unyielding upbringing. For a child, he was very observant, aloof and clever, with sharp, darting eyes that noticed any indiscretion. In his mind, he kept a tally of all insults thrown against him by his betters. Whether the insult was real or perceived did not matter. Every slight was chewed upon and digested slowly, so that the taste grew bitter. One day, when he was still only in Nicobacus and had not yet been fully breached, his father took him aside and warned him that a woman's love can never be trusted. They are not constant, came the explanation. They are wanton, fickle creatures, driven by an insatiable lust. The serpent offered the apple to Eve because he knew, wickedly clever thing, that a woman cannot ignore her curiosity and will fall to temptation with the smallest provocation. His father seized his wrist then and shook him. The only constant is a man's devotion to duty, to queen and country. It is folly to trust a woman, for they are incapable of loyalty. Be vigilant, my son, for they will always find a way to destroy you if you let them. These words stayed with him all through childhood and into his days as a young man. He knew it to be true. He had no reason to doubt. He saw fickleness in all women he passed, from the postmistress to the match girls on the corner. So why then was he so surprised when he arrived home early only to discover his beloved entangled in another's arms? Such a rage he had never felt before, filled with insult and disgust, he surely thought he would burst into flames. And such rage she had never seen in him before, though she often before considered it a possibility. He was the quiet sort, very mindful of appearances, but he possessed a streak of cruelty that lurked just below the fragile veneer of his fine beard. As the red flush coursed up his cheeks and his lips tightened with a slash of light, she realized with sharp dread that she unleashed the full onslaught of his restrained temper. He had been willing to ignore the hints and clues of her indiscretions, but she had been too careless. The startling vision of her affair laid out baldly before him in a swirl of cast off petticoats and stockings was too much for him to bear. He seized her lover's hair in his hands, wrenched the terrified arms out of her grip. No, don't, she begged, but he kicked her aside. His face remained stony. His eyes became discs of slate, dark, impenetrable. There were screams of protest. Cries for help, quickly silenced by his hands tightening around the long, pale throat. The body, only moments ago warm and moving in her embrace, collapsed dead to the floor. He took a moment to catch his breath and smooth back the long hair that had fallen out of place. Now then, he said, looking down at the sobbing woman, I will not abide by this behavior. Do you understand? She saw it too hard to answer. So she nodded her head and clutched her arms around her naked knees so quickly. It had happened so quickly. Never again, he spat. You are an affront to God. You disgust me. Do you hear me? Disgust. She reached out one hand across the carpet to caress her lover's fingers, half curled and turning blue. But he seized up the corpse's feet and dragged it away to deal with it as he saw best. She heard his boots stop down the stairs. Her lover's head resounding upon each step in her tribe, down to the basement where the kindling was cut. 